Hello, I'm Jeff from Digital Tech TV for Inform TV. And we're here again for a show, and I have Steve Sadesky here again from Quality Computer Services. Thank you. And uh, yeah, and so welcome, Steve. And we're going to go through some things that uh, uh, hopefully people will be interested in hearing. And uh, basically, the overview of the show today uh, it's viruses. Backups, Windows 8, uh, we're going to talk about a little bit of news and at the end we're going to talk about five secrets that every smartphone user should know but may not know. So make sure you stay tuned for that. So let's start out with viruses, Steve. Um, you know, I was just thinking about it before you came here and uh, um, I was thinking well, a lot of people probably don't really know what a virus is or where they come from. So maybe let's just take just a quick moment and just why don't you just okay. explain what it is and what is a virus? Well, the, the viruses have changed a lot over the years. It used to be they were basically just a string of code that was sent trying to damage your machine and it would get in there, delete files, cause the machine to not boot up correctly and it was just people getting their jollies by um, affecting people's machines in a negative way. Now they've changed it to where the whole idea of a virus is to to get money out of you with getting into your machine, stealing information out of your machine, or a lot of the fake antivirus viruses that pop up and look like they are a antivirus program telling you you have all these problems and they want you to buy their program to fix these problems and then you give them your credit card number, they you know, keep charging your card and they don't fix anything. So it has now turned into a money-making business, not just a way yeah. to see how many machines <clears throat> they can break. And it's a it's a it's a right. it's a big business for them, so they're yeah. not going to so stop really, anytime soon. Really, people are using viruses now to do scams yep. and to to it's, it's make all a, a lot of money. Yeah, it's just a scam so, to try to. Right. And a lot of them. There's one that's really nasty where it's a big FBI warning that pops up mm -hmm. on your screen, and it locks up your machine. There's really no way for the home user to get rid of it themselves, um, but it is something that if you have. Um, your Java up to date, which right now it's version 7, update 25, that does fix it where you can't get the virus. But I've also seen other viruses that install older versions of Java back on your machine, which then opens the door for these viruses that take take advantage of the old versions of Java. So it's a, a thing to keep an eye on if you know how to do it. Go in there and make sure you don't have any old versions of Java on your machine mm -hmm. and that makes a big difference. But yeah, viruses are a a business now. They're just not mm -hmm. something people do to get their kicks. It's all yeah. about making money. So Right. Yeah, viruses and and I was thinking about it, viruses I think have been around almost since the beginning mm -hmm. of PCs. Probably not right away, but probably pretty early. Yeah. And a virus is just a computer program. Um, I think when the internet started, though, then they really got big because mm -hmm. they could spread all over the place. Yeah. But before that, it wasn't. It probably maybe there wasn't much of, a, of viruses before the internet. I don't know. Wasn't much of a way to spread them yeah. before the internet. Um, right. And now they spread themselves through the internet, so it, it makes it really yeah. hard to keep up with them. So. And not only can they be on phone or uh, uh, PCs, but phones and phones tablets and, tablets and, and, and everything. That. So yeah. yeah, so it's kind of a tough deal, but. So the latest one we need to look out for is this one that, that says FBI. The uh, big has an FBI it's a warning. big FBI warning and they pop up and they want you to go buy a gift card and key yeah. in the card number so that they can get their money and being that you have to go buy a gift card, you have to buy it with cash. You hmm. give them your number and they now have the cash and there's no way to do a stop payment, there's no way to track them down. So yeah. it eliminates the credit cards and the paper trail. And it's a good, you know, it's a good way for them to yeah. make a lot of money without any paper trail that they can't be caught. So, and right. I've seen it anywhere from two hundred to four hundred dollars that they want you to to give them. And a lot of people just say, "I'd just rather buy a new machine than yeah. than pay to unlock the old one." But if you uh, have a lot of hmm. important data on your machine, then you kind of have to unlock yeah. it to get your data back. So, um, yeah. yeah. So for viruses, uh, you know, I guess. 
it can they range in how uh, how they affect your machine too. I mean, they can slow your machine down, yeah. or they can totally stop your machine. Yeah, they're, they're, a slow machine is a good indicator that there's something in there. If mm -hmm. you notice your machine is slower than it has been, it's usually because a virus of some sort has gotten into it. Then there's the other viruses that once they get in, just completely shut you down, trying to scam you into paying them to unlock your machine and none of them actually do unlock they just mm -hmm. take your money and run they don't mm -hmm. fix the problem so it's not even mm -hmm. like you got mm -hmm. this virus paid the price and got yeah. cleaned up right. you still have to go through and get rid of the virus after you pay them mm -hmm. and yeah. nothing ever happens so yeah heck of a deal well that kind of leads us into the next important topic which is backing up your mm -hmm. data so because if you get a virus in it and you lose your computer yeah you got a lot of data on there like photos and yeah. documents and things that you want to make sure you have a copy yeah. of mm -hmm. so and that yeah if you have a good backup that opens you up to the option of you know instead of putting the money into cleaning up an old computer if it's going to be an issue if you have all of your documents pictures all of your data backed up we can just get a new computer, transfer all the data to it, and you don't have to go through the expense of mm -hmm. you know, fixing an old one. But in most cases, people don't do backups. Mm -hmm. And um, if a virus causes your machine to crash, um, if, even if it's not a virus, if it's a power outage, just an old machine, something causes the machine to fail, if it's, if it's the hard drive that fails, your data is gone unless you have a backup. Yeah. So here's a quick tip. If you want, if you're not into backups and you don't want to be hassled, but you know you've got stuff on your computer that you would really hate to lose, just go out and buy a flash drive for like 10 bucks at Walmart or Target or Office Max or something. Um, you can get maybe what, an eight or 16 gig? About for about for 10 bucks. 10 bucks, 10, 11 bucks, yeah. you get eight, eight gig and that'll yeah. hold a lot of information. Just, and then just so. put it in your computer in the USB port and just copy, use file, probably use File Explorer uh, or somehow if you, can, if you can figure out how to copy stuff from your computer to that little drive, you could just copy your folder like your My Pictures folder. If you mm -hmm. don't want to lose your pictures, just copy all those over to that little flash drive take it out and put it in your desk and you've got a backup. Yeah. And before you go so, before you go shopping for a flash drive, if you go in and right click on your my documents, go in and right click on my pictures and go down in the little list that pops up, click on properties, mm -hmm. it'll show you the size of the file. So right. you can figure out the size of your picture file, your document file, your different things, and then you'll know how big of a device you need to store yeah. all of that so right. if it I've, I've seen people that have 20 gig worth of pictures on their machine mm. and they need a, a much bigger drive to store yeah. it all but if you know what you need before you go shopping you're not going to be in a situation where you're halfway through a backup and all of a sudden it tells you you're out of space yeah. if you know that you need you need four you need eight you need 16 gig you get the right one and and get it all backed up and saved and then yeah. keep it in a safe spot and you're you're protected yeah. in case of Failures or viruses. Yeah, so. that's a that's a really really easy way to just do a backup, just get it done, and yeah. and do that at least. Especially pictures. I mean, that those are things that people would really. I would. I would surely surely hate to lose pictures. You know. So I have my stuff backed up on a, on an external hard drive actually, but which is almost the same thing really as a flash mm -hmm. drive, but a flash a little flash stick. You know, those are just so easy. And there seems to always be one of them on sale for like yeah. half or third Spe price you especially know. with the back to school they're yeah. they're really cheap right now yeah so. i believe i bought a 16 gig stick for about ten dollars or ten or twelve dollars yeah. at office max a while ago and yeah i mean that's a lot of storage yeah so that's great um windows 8 is out um windows 8 and I, I just got done with Windows XP. Now I'm on Windows 7. And was there anything? Let me see. Was it what 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 was it? Windows XP then Vista. Vista. Was in between, uh, I yeah. skipped that. Mm, most people did. <laughs> Luckily. Yeah. <clears throat> and then it was Windows 7, right? And, yep. And then Windows 8. And now 8 came out. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then there's another one coming out after 8, right? They're coming right. out with something after 8. Um, they're working on multiple different fixes because nobody's happy with 8. 
um, 8 is very it's it's made for the phone the tablet and the computer to all be on the same operating system and it's yeah. pretty decent for a phone or a tablet cuz it's all touch screen just like the the apple mm -hmm. and the ipads um but it's not very user friendly in the office mm -hmm. and because it made so many changes to windows 8 the printer people the different office programs different things weren't ready for it so when 8 came out nothing worked with 8 yeah and it kind of gave true. microsoft another black eye just like vista but mm -hmm. they are coming out with something um, even as soon as this fall october november a rework of 8 to give back things like the start button and different things that people are used to from xp vista mm -hmm. 7 um, to make 8 a little bit more computer-like rather than just tablet and phone yeah and um, that'll help but um, I think spring of next year the new version is supposed to be out whether it's 8.2 or 9 or Windows Blue they have all these different words they're using for the, the reworks right now we'll see what they come out with but um, just getting some of the features back that people are looking for from the older versions of Windows will help the you know PC laptop mm -hmm. people to use it and and get around it but I do a lot of setups for people I've got one just picked up the other day that somebody wants me to go through and get it working before they they just can't mm -hmm. even figure out how to get it working <laughs> out of the box that's kind of crazy and once it's working then I can show them how to get around in it and stuff but mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. a completely different operating system and yeah. in the past from 95 to 98 to XP to all the other ones they've always looked pretty much the same with a few little changes and 8 is just a completely different thing so yeah, right. um, it's all live tiles they call them on the desktop and it's a neat feature for the tablets and phones where you've got your email your pictures your your different things news and weather all right on the desktop you can tap whatever live tile you want and it gives you your current email your different things but on the home computer or the office computer it's really not what people want mm -hmm. they want to sit down they want to open up a program they want to do some work they mm -hmm. don't want to sit there and have to sort through all these different tiles that are mm -hmm. clicking and flashing yeah, the in front navigation of them, so. is just totally different mm -hmm. yeah so if they can give you the option of even clicking a single button and turning these tiles back into a desktop where you mm -hmm. can simply go back and use it like a computer and that's one of the things I do when I set up a machine is get it to where mm -hmm. you click and it's a desktop icon and you get your mm -hmm. desktop you're used to seeing and then we can have all the programs linked on the desktop where you can just open up and and run them and it makes eight mm -hmm. a usable program but mm -hmm. out of the box it's kind of a, a beast kind to deal tricky, with so. yeah right a lot of things have been happening with Microsoft lately um, their CEO is resigning mm -hmm. and Steve Ballmer uh, and uh, also Microsoft is buying Nokia no. the cell phone company so they want to get in more into the mobile world and you know I don't know I think they've got huge challenges they're such a big powerful company but um, you know, Google ha has uh, really, and Facebook have really mm -hmm. um, positioned themselves in to where Microsoft would like to be. Yeah. You know, and but Microsoft has, you know, they're in kind of a tough position, I think, because they're on the desktop, and so much, so many things that have moved to the web. Um, you still need devices to get there, but um, and maybe that's why they're thinking about the cell phone yeah. thing. You know, but it'll be interesting. Um, Another thing, oh yeah, another little bit of news. Yahoo has a new logo. Yippee! You know, I don't Every know how big a deal have a that is. Logo. <laughs> well, no, they they picked <laughs> an official one new logo. Yeah, yeah, now they finally today. I think they finally announced that they chose one of mm -hmm. the ones that they. And I read that they spent a couple, or they spent a couple of days on a weekend designing this. You know, every little teeny curve <laughs> and letter. You know, they had to get it just right. So I, I don't know. Uh, it was. It's funny how they how that marketing thing works with. How picky they can be mm -hmm. on these little things, but um, so um, another thing too. This is this is very interesting. Um, we've heard of the, uh, of course, the iPads, the tablets, which are similar to 
um, laptops. And then Microsoft has a tablet hybrid. It's kind of a hybrid between a laptop and a tablet. They call it the Surface. Mm -hmm. Now, Sony has one as well. And I found a comment from their director of product management uh, for Vi Vio, the, mm -hmm. the PCs that they make, that are the laptops. And the quote was, our, our hope is to replace the clamshell market altogether. So the clamshell being the, the traditional laptop that closes you know, with the top lid. And what they want to replace it with then is this, it, this hybrid that's more of a tablet, but it still has a keyboard. It folds out and mm -hmm. sits up kind of like a laptop, but it's more like a tablet. Yeah, and it's more like you see so. a lot of the people with the iPads in a leather case or something yeah. that they flip it open and it becomes like a picture stand and the tablet stands up and you can even get for the iPads the same scenario, a little mini keyboard that sits inside of these cases and you can actually type. Um, mm -hmm. But that's getting kind of the best of both worlds where you have the portability of a tablet, you can take it and go wherever you want, but then if you're going to sit down and type a letter, if you're going to go and do a lot of data entry in a job situation, you're not trying to tap a virtual keyboard on the screen, you have a real keyboard you can sit down and use, yeah. and it makes right. it a much more usable product and more portable because you don't have the the weight of such a, a heavy yeah. machine, and, right. and they've changed all of these smaller machines the tablets are going into a the solid state drive so they're smaller mm -hmm. lighter takes yep. less energy to run so you don't have the spinning drives anymore so if they do happen to fall or get bumped drives aren't crashing because of the shock it's a solid chip in there that stores all of your information so you get rid of the moving parts and you get less trouble yeah, and, right. and faster performance so and i've seen more and more people carrying these things around they'll come into the office mm -hmm. and They'll just open up their little iPad thing, or it could even be uh, another, uh, you know, a yeah, non-Apple yeah. tablet, and instantly they're they're looking at a website, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, right there. I mean, they're, so they're connected all the time. They don't have to search for a Wi-Fi because yeah. they're probably connected through the, through the cell, you know, cell phone yeah. network or something like a 4G thing mm -hmm. or something. Um, but that seems to me that that's kind of going to be growing and it's going to yeah. be more of the future. I don't think that would replace a cell phone either. Uh, I don't think because the cell phone is so portable you put it in your pocket mm -hmm. you can't really put a tablet in your pocket no. so uh, but there's probably a you know a place for both yeah. um, a lot of people will probably have both but maybe it maybe a laptop would be replaced eventually with you know with mm -hmm. these tablet hybrid I don't know if there's a name for for them even really um, a general name you know like really it's not a tablet not. It's, it's, it's not. basically the Kind of a, a, a hybrid is what they're kind of termed because it is a tablet with the add-on of a keyboard and some of them it's physically attached you take your tablet stick it into a slot on the back of edge of yeah. a keyboard and it stands up in there like a laptop other ones it's two separate pieces and it's through a bluetooth connection that the keyboard talks to right. the to the tablet, well, and well, you don't need to have an actual physical connection between the two. We'll of them, have to so. come up with a name for that, like uh, tab book, maybe. Maybe that's <laughs> that's the name. Now it's a tab book. So you heard it here. I we just we'll we just to, invented the name. We'll, we'll so we'll see the if phrase. That, yeah, we'll see if that catches on. Tab book. <laughs> it's a it's a tablet with a keyboard. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Let's get to the. Um, uh, let's see here. Yeah, let's get to the uh, five secrets that every smartphone user needs to know that may not that they may not know. Um, and I, I found this online here today, and th these are some really good tips here. Um, smartphones have been around for six years now. I guess that's what it says. Uh, I don't know that the first ones were really what they they certainly weren't <laughs> what they are now, but no. um, I don't know. Anyway, the first tip is taking a screenshot. If you've ever wanted to capture something that's on your screen on your phone and put it on Facebook or something or capture it as a picture, which is what a screenshot is, mm -hmm. uh, there's a way to do that. On an iPhone, you hold the home button along with the sleep-wake button and that will capture what's on your screen and save it as an, a picture. 
um, on an Android, hold the power button and the volume button down at the same time. And then you've captured it. And there was, I, I actually needed to do this uh, a while back for a project I was working on. I needed to take, um, I, I was working on a website that would show on a mobile phone and I needed screenshots from the phone and I actually found an app finally that did it. I had a hard time finding it, but but I didn't know about this because this would have this would have saved me some time because I could have done that. So you could take a screenshot. Uh, I'll, this the instructions for that will be in our show notes, by the way, on databay.com/tv. So if you want to know how to do that, just go there. Um, salvaging a wet phone. Uh, how do you do that? If you drop your phone in a, a bathtub or a toilet or a lake, you know I've heard of people who have done this. Um, so there's a trick, there's a way to do this. And the oven is not one of the no. solutions. <laughs> uh, but it says first and most important, don't turn it on if it's, if it's off. Um, if it has a battery, take the battery out. And then this is it, this is the trick. Fill up a plastic bag with rice and put the phone in the bag with the rice and seal the bag and let it sit overnight and the rice will pull the moisture out of the phone. And then you can try turn it on the next day and if it's if it doesn't work, go buy a new one. Mm -hmm. If it does, you're you're your luck. So have you heard of anybody who's dropped the phone in the I know a lot water? of people that have dropped phones <laughs> have in you? the water. I never have, but they're they're Luckily actually now they're selling phone rescue kits mm -hmm. and it's basically instead of rice you know, Ziploc oh. bag at home with rice is the home remedy. What they're selling is basically those sil silica packets like you would get oh, in yeah. a pair of shoes or the right. packets that come in some vitamins and stuff to keep things from sticking together. It's just silica packets in this Ziploc bag. Yeah, of course, bag. there's and always an entrepreneur mm -hmm. that's willing to make money so, on something that you could do at, at home. So you, you've you know, got anyway, the, <laughs> the home remedy of, of rice and it does work. And then they, I don't know, they yeah. just claim the the silica tends to pull moisture faster, um, and then you don't also you don't get any kind of dust because if you mm. if you rinse rice and you see all the you know, yeah. cloudiness in the water, they don't want all that dust in the phone either. So yeah. it is a cleaner, faster way to do it. You don't in, sell those, do you? I don't sell them, but <laughs> okay. I can definitely let you know how to get a hold of okay. them if you want to have one on the ready. Yeah. All right. Great. Great. All right, how about if you lose your phone? Here's the next tip. If you lose your phone, this has probably happened to a lot of people. They've lost their phone and they've either found it, luckily found it, or but there is a, there is a way, a high-tech way that you can find a phone. And uh, I know you know all about this, Steve, but there are apps that where Apple has an app called Find My iPhone and Android has one called Where's My Droid? And uh, basically, it uses the phone's GPS system. Uh, and then you can be on somebody else's cell phone or smartphone, I should say, or a PC. And you can find where exactly the coordinates of where your phone is or where it was last registered, where it was on last. Yeah. Uh, they're getting fancier now, too, where the, you can control the phone remotely so that if someone has it and they don't want to give it back to you, it'll take pictures of, of the people mm -hmm. who are holding the phone <laughs> and you're controlling it remotely. So that's pretty good. So um, I, and I know a couple of people who have lost their phones and I know one guy who lost, he told me he lost his phone out in the country in the outside somewhere. And it was like uh, an area of, you know, several square miles and the app pinpointed his phone you know down to a few feet and he found the phone back so that was, that's pretty amazing and i know another person who uh they lost their phone at home they didn't know if they lost it at home or at work or where it was and they used this uh find my droid app and they they narrowed it down to the living room in their house mm -hmm. and it was in the couch or under yeah. the couch or something under the cushion so yeah so that was pretty cool um Here's another seek. This isn't really a secret. This was actually in the news here, the national news lately. Don't share your location. Um, yeah, that was on. I don't know if it was 60 Minutes or what, but um, you're, when you take a picture, your phone can register with the picture the location the picture was taken. Mm -hmm. And so if you upload that picture to a sharing website, like on Facebook or wherever, um, 
somebody could look at that picture and figure out where exactly where that picture was taken. I mean, like down to the mm, yeah. few feet of where that picture was taken, probably. Yeah. And so they did a little experiment here with a family and a, 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 like a young girl had taken a picture with her phone and they walked up to the, you know, this was the news team who walked up to the house and uh, they said, hey, I know, I know where your daughter is, or lives. You know, I know where her room is even, you know, <laughs> because of this picture. So that was kind of scary, but it, uh, what you can do, and you can chime in on this too, there are settings on the camera where you can turn off the GPS settings for your, just your photos, mm -hmm. I yeah, guess. Do you know any more um, about that? Yeah, but you, for the photo size, it's nice to get rid of that because of the, the tracking, yeah. but you don't want to completely disable the GPS features because that's how the locating the phone apps go right. through the GPS. That's even how they have, in cases of kidnappings, they'll mm -hmm. track the phone through right. GPS and, and know where the person has been. But right. having the GPS on, but yeah, getting rid of the, the tagging on the photos where people can see exactly where you were taking these pictures, because it kind of, yeah. you know, but the way people put their lives online anyway, it's right. just one more thing to keep you a little bit safe because so much is out there yeah if you can hide your location anyway it's a it's a good thing and the other thing is using the maps app on mm -hmm. you know a lot of people use maps yep. and you don't want to have your gps off mm -hmm. uh, or otherwise you, know, you can't do the navigation yeah. and stuff like that so so um and if you want to know how to how to do that just like a, a again go to databay.com slash tv it'll be on the screen and and the instructions will be there on how to do that on an iPhone and on a Droid. Um, I don't know about the Windows phones. I, uh, I guess I don't have the, the instructions weren't on, on this for that. But there are a few Windows phones out there, and there may still be uh, for a while. Mm -hmm. There may be a lot of those. Uh, then the, the fifth tip, the fifth so-called secret here, <laughs> um, this is just about smartphone uses. It has a list of a few things that are really kind of amazing here. Um, one of them talks about uh, the microphone on your, uh, your phone where it can keep track of noise around you while you're listening to music. So if, if a louder than a regular background sound happens, it'll get sent to your headphones. I mean, that's kind of sophisticated. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, if you're listening to your headphones and someone knocks on the door and you, want, you, you don't want to miss yeah. that, but you would, unless this works right, you know, and so uh, that's kind of interesting. And I've heard of another one that will uh, record like the, the last, it'll record all the time audio. And so if you wanted to remember what someone said five minutes ago, you can just go back five minutes. It's kind of like going back five minutes in time, to, yeah. <laughs> but it only keeps the last five minutes. Yeah. So it's, oh, that's kind of funny. This one is kind of interesting. Instant heart rate for iPhone and I, and Android. Instant heart rate must be the name of the app. It uses the phone's camera to figure out your heart rate by, and it detects the light passing through your finger and how it changes as your heart beats. So, wow, hmm. smartphones are being used for everything, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then uh, metal detector. You can use your smartphone as a metal detector even, it says. Um, uh, uses the phone's built-in compass. This must be an app again. Um, metal detector apps, I guess there's more than one. Uh, uses your built-in compass to find metals, and you uh, you just have to hold your phone close to the ground. I I suspect it's probably not quite as good as a real metal probably detector, not but quite as good. But. <laughs> but that reminds me of the apps that do leveling. You know, you mm -hmm. can use your phone as a level and as a compass, of course. And you know, yeah, the flashlight. So flashlight, yeah, and that actually is very that handy. That comes in very handy. Yeah, probably uses a battery quick. So, mm -hmm. but it, but very handy. Yeah, so. But again, uh, check the show notes for some of these things if you're interested in, uh, uh, you know, in, in knowing how to do some of these things. And send us an email if you um, if you have any questions or suggestions or comments. And all of that information again will be on our website, and I'll put what I can on the screen here. Uh, Steve, anything else you want to? Any words of wisdom you want to leave us with, or <laughs> <laughs> be beware of viruses? Um, only thing on like viruses would be. If you get an email that you don't know who it's from, or if it looks to be an email from any of the shipping companies, the UPS, FedEx, DHL, and they claim that you have a package and they 
want you to click a link for more information, don't click the link. Those yeah. those are one of the ways a lot of viruses get passed around is through these fake shipping notification emails. Yeah. Um, if you don't open those and you don't open anything that is just a just a link when you get an email from somebody that you really don't know and mm -hmm. it just has a link on it, yeah, don't click it. I, because that's as a general virus, rule, so. don't click a link in an email yeah. unless you really, really know mm -hmm. who, it, who it's from. So yeah, just a way yeah. to keep you safe. So yeah, great, good. That's a good final thought. So okay, well, thanks again, Steve. Well, thanks and, for having me. Yeah, good to have you here. We'll have you back again for some other stuff, and hopefully not for anything too drastic in terms of viruses, but we'll, we'll have you back again. So thanks for watching. This is uh, Digital Tech TV for Informed TV, and we'll see you next time.